Croiso friends, welcome back to Opus LNI, where sometimes we let other people make the hard decisions. I had two ideas for this week's project and literally could not decide between them. So I did the only sensible thing and made you decide. I put up a series of polls in my Instagram stories asking you what I should make, and the result was a weaving project in green and gold. I've been interested in learning brocade weaving for a while now, which is where you have your normal warp and weft threads, but then you also have a second decorative warp that floats over some of the warp threads and under others. And the way that those change every row forms a design. I thought this sort of narrow ribbon would make a good fillet. You know those circlets you often see as part of a generically medieval outfit? Well, they have some basis in reality. Fillets or diadems were thin ribbons or circlets worn by women in the Middle Ages, but they weren't worn across the middle of the forehead, they were worn higher, right at the hairline. They could be worn alone, usually in conjunction with template braids or with veils. So everyone, go grab your cuppa. Today I am drinking Harney & Sons chai since it is finally cool enough to want spiced tea. Let's get into it. As always, the first thing to do is gather supplies. I have one spool of 60 over 2 silk thread in dark green from A.O. and Weaver, which should be just enough. But I'm going to need to wind the thread off onto three other bobbins in order to warp the loom. I started off winding the bobbins by hand and then realized it would take approximately forever and outsourced that job to my mechanical apprentice. There are fancy bobbin winding tools available on the internet, but I have a drill, bamboo skewers, toothpicks, and an overabundance of impatience. So I got creative. When I'm weaving a new design, I like to have an analog version to reference. I found a design from one of the Birka graves that I think is really pretty, so I'm copying a portion of it out onto some graph paper. In this pattern, the black squares indicate where the gold brocade weft will pass underneath the green warp threads. There's also a border of green on each side, but I didn't color that in until later. The warping method I like, called a continuous warp, works best if the colors are the same on all the cards. You take the number of cards you'll be using, in this case 15, and put one thread through each of the four holes of the pack. Then you secure the ends of the threads. I find that tying them together makes them easier to manage. And then you can start warping all four threads together, dropping one card at a time at the beginning of the warping path and maintaining an even tension throughout the process.
When all of the cards are dropped and everything is warped, you can tie off the ends of the threads. I like to tie them together to make the warp truly continuous. I am flipping the cards so that the direction the threads go through alternates every other one. Since the four threads of each card twist around each other as the cards are turned forward, the woven band would curl if all of the cards were threaded the same way. Alternating them will counteract that tendency. Since I've never done brocade weaving before, I have gathered several materials to experiment with. Two different thicknesses of gold thread and two of the silk. I'll start off the first sample section by cross weaving the weft thread to lock everything in and prevent it from raveling later. After a length of plain weaving, eventually adding in the gold thread for a pass or two in order to lock it in, I will start the brocade by turning the cards forward one turn and placing my silk weft thread in the shed as usual. Then working only on the upper warp threads, I will use a stick to pick up the ones that should pass over the gold weft, creating a secondary shed for the gold to pass through. Okay, I have woven up a little sampler length just so I could test out different threads and see what was working and what was not working. So this is the beginning. Um, the warp thread I am using is A Window Weavers 20 over two. It's what I normally use for weavings like this. I started off by using the same weight for a weft thread. Uh, I, <laughs> I ran out of green, so I was using blue, but I, that didn't beat down compactly enough and I wasn't happy with the way that the motif was stretching out. Um, so for this motif and on I switched to the thinner thread that she sells. This is a 60 over 2 and um, it is just a little bit thinner than buttonhole silk um, and that compacted nicely and spaced the motif out really well. As far as the gold thread goes, I started off by using this gold thread and I experimented with it, held single and double, and it was just too big. It wouldn't compact well when it was doing the turns at the corners. It wasn't bending nicely and so you get these really weird like not parallel lines of gold thread. I was really not happy with it. So I switched to a thinner passing thread here. This is what I would use to stitch down this gold on a gold work project, like an embroidery project. So I just held this doubled and it gave me exactly the density and compactness that I wanted in the motif. I tried a different couple ways of weaving as well. So for the first half of this motif, I tried, let me turn it over so you can see. 
I tried skipping the two border cards so that there wasn't any gold on the edges, but I found that it didn't give me um, nicely parallel lines. But when I switched to just weaving underneath everything, um, yes, you can see the gold at the edges, but it looks so much nicer. So with that, I think I have determined everything that I want to use. So I'm going to um, advance the weaving a little bit and start on the actual fillet. Again, I'll start with a length of plain weaving, turning the cards forward for about two centimeters, then back for about the same length. This helps mitigate the twist in the warp that builds up when we turn the cards only forward. Time to start weaving the brocade pattern. Each card has four holes, resulting in a shed that is comprised of two threads up and two threads down. So each square on my grid paper is one card, but two threads. When I separate the threads that go over and under the gold weft, I have to make sure I catch both of them or there will be a little glint of gold where there shouldn't be. Also, I do speed up as I get more familiar with the process. Once I've woven enough that there's not a comfortable space to turn the cards, I'll advance the warp. This happens just like with ankle weaving. I will loosen the tension bar and pull the woven band toward me until there's plenty of space for the shed. This project makes it really easy to do that since the band is short and moves easily. Then I can retension the loom and continue on. I think weaving is one of those kinds of projects where it's hard to tell exactly how long it takes on video because there's not a lot of different steps to visually indicate the length of time spent. So this clip is a time lapse to illustrate exactly how much goes into 30 minutes of weaving. Okay, so that time lapse was half an hour and I wove pretty much continuously. So I thought I would um, take a look and here I put this marker in um, when I started weaving and here's where I ended. So. That is just about one and three quarters of an inch. I wonder what is 20 divided by 1.75? 20 divided by 1.75 is approximately 11.4286. So it's probably going to take me about 11 and a half hours to have finished this completely.
At the end of the band, I'll switch to plain weaving again like I did in the beginning, tying down the gold thread by weaving it as a regular weft for a couple of rows before trimming it off as close to the band as possible. Thank you to all of my current and continuing Kofi members. Your support and the support of all of my members and croissants makes it that much easier to do what I do and provide quality content for everyone. Thank you all so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break for the finishing touches. When the weaving is finished, I will employ a new trick I learned from Alois of Finchingfeld, link in the cards, to give the end just as clean a finish as the beginning. And I'm sorry in advance that this footage came out so blurry, but I wanted to keep it in anyway since I think it does a good enough job of illustrating the technique. I'll weave three passes, adding a loop of thread to the weft with the loop part pointing the opposite direction as the thread is traveling. Then I will cut the thread, leaving about a 7 inch tail, and weave one more pass plain, no loop, ending with a card turn. Then I'll put the weft tail through the topmost loop and gently pull it through until it sits snugly against the band selvage. Repeat this with the other loops, and then trim the thread as close to the selvage as possible. Time to cut the weaving, which is the most satisfying thing in the world and which this video doesn't do justice at all, and untwist all of the warp threads. I left those quite long in order to make ties on either end of the fillet, which I will do by braiding them and securing the ends with wraps like little tassels.
Thanks for joining me today. I should do more weaving projects. I always forget how much fun I have with them. And this one had the added benefit of bringing joy to my little corvid heart by being a shiny thing. As we start the sprint towards the end of the year, don't forget to bring yourself joy too with hot tea, cozy videos, and shiny things. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, click the bell for notifications if you'd like, and consider sharing this or any of my videos to social media. As always, if you're interested in finding me, I am at Opus LNI everywhere, and those links as well as the link to my Kofi will all be in the description box below. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Whew.